Yep. The microphone. Yep. Now we're good. Cool. Okay. No slagging off WordPress today. I know it's not always the best thing to admin, um, but it is one of the most popular. Um, and I work with VPSs uh, at Remu Hosting, and we literally just rent a VPS out to people. They do what they want, and there are people who are very clued up, you know, like you guys, and there are people who just want to have a blog and want it cheaper and want to better manage it because, you know, sometimes WordPress.com is either expensive or a bit crippled, they can't run the plugins they want. And this can be all kinds of fun things for me as a sysadmin. So uh, the biggest thing that I have is that some people don't update them very well. They don't update them at all. Um, and then there gets exploited ones, and that's pretty much my job to fix that up or to help people with that stuff. Um, and the thing is, every system is different. Some people run cPanel, some people run Plesk, some people run, you know, so many different systems. So many, many years ago, I just got frustrated with the time spent fixing WordPresses, uh, upgrading them. So I developed a quick, you know, while loop that was uh, just checking for any WordPresses that might be old or insecure. Um, and um, there are lots of different uh, options there for, uh, for doing that. At the time when I did it, there was literally nothing that would do it from the command line. I don't want to log into every single WordPress to upgrade them. I don't want to have to know their username and password, which is about another five emails and a couple of hours of work to, to figure out the, the details for that. So I wanted a script that would do that. Um, once I set up the script, the basic script, it just checked the WordPress version. If it was out of date, it would download the new zip and unpack it over top of it, which worked straight out of the box, uh, just like that. Um, a few people used it. I put it on the blog, um, the remote blog, and they said, oh, this is actually quite handy, you know. Um, and then somebody submitted and said, why don't you use the API to check the version? Because I had the versions hard-coded and kept doing releases every version. So then I added the API calls. Um, and then I added plugins for the API calls. So I could also upgrade plugins, uh, upgrade the themes, and for the most part, this works really, really well. So now you can upgrade all the WordPresses, or it just check, you know, just all the plugins, all the WordPresses, all the themes. The only ones that don't work are the ones that are off-site. Uh, people go to uh, Enchanted Themes or whatever, Theme Forest or whatever it's called. I don't use WordPress that much myself, as you can tell. Um, but I do know how to fix it a lot, and I do that a lot. So uh, that's the probably main thing. So that's pretty much the gist of what you can do with it. And I have to say that I kind of started it and it's been a bit of a, a bunch of patches with other people uh, now. But for the most part, I haven't updated it in a long, long time now. Um, there are other options and stuff, but this works pretty much on any system. It doesn't need a particular version. We have people who still run very, very old distros who probably shouldn't. Um, <laughs> um, the minus C tag later on added literally just checks and exits. This is really handy for having on cron, and I've often set that up on servers where I know that we have to manage them, not the customer. So we get an email when they're out of date, and we can just quickly log in and update them. No one wants to update them unattended, really. It does take a backup and dump of the database before it updates everything, which makes life pretty easily. Um, it does install zip uh, and a few other things, and that's basically what it looks like when it's running, which is fairly simple, straightforward. I'm not going to sit there and show you the code. It's available online. I'll have links later. And so that's just basically what it's doing. It's, it's a little bit verbose, and sometimes things break, as you can see. Was, couldn't remove a zip file. And that's basically the top one showing you what the output is if I'm just doing a check. And I'll often, if I see the CPU high, I see there's an exploited WordPress, I'll often just run it on a server just to check if there's any other WordPresses, and they'll email and go, hey, look, you've got all these WordPress installs that are out today. Do you need us to do it? You're good to do it yourself. And then there's the exploited ones. <laughs> and everyone likes those, and everyone likes, everyone has backups, right? Um, and then there's those people who have plugins which do backups, which are kind of cool and kind of not. Um, I actually host my cousin's WordPress, and I was wondering why she uses so much disk space. <laughs> I couldn't fault her. She had like four gigs of backups, but <laughs> she had backups at least, I suppose, which was something. I prefer to do backups uh, in different ways, but you know, that kind of works. The thing with the exploited websites is you cannot remove just the exploited files. They may have something in the theme, they may have something in just, and you can look for them and hunt for them for hours, but ultimately you need to remove the entire website and replace all the files. I know it's 10 minutes, only 15 minute talk. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so you've got to literally move the whole document right away. There's nothing you can do. It is gone, beggars. Um, so download a fresh copy of the files, the plugins, whatever else you need. Check your files that you are going to copy across, which would be your upload folder, your configs. Um, and preventively, you can set up stuff like fail to ban. And there's some really good fail to ban rules, which will stop people from hammering on WP admin links or um, any other links that they should or shouldn't be doing. So I created another script. <laughs> This one was kind of based off the other one. I thought, well, you know, I'm just restoring the website. I'm not really upgrading it. So I kind of used the same while loops and for loops that I was using for the plugins, the themes. And so hence the script came. And this literally just moves the direct document away, re-downloads the files, checks the upload folder for anything dodgy. It does not check the database at all. That is something you probably need to do anyway. And I usually say to someone to do that. But it does, it, it saves me about an hour's worth of work at least, just, and it takes like two seconds. So, you know, it, and then there's always the custom plugins and themes which I have to go and look up and download and find. And, but the thing is, it, it ultimately does a large portion of the work for me. There are other tools now, and there are actually really good tools. If you're running your own server, or if you know this customer is only going to be having, you know, these things and they're quite smart, use the other tools. They're actually really, really good. The WPCLI is actually really cool, and one of our customers, I think he uses a mashup of that plus part of the script of my one because we can use the check for them to set the rule up to date and if they're not, run this command and do that and whatever else. Um, connecting to WordPress.com, this is probably the only real thing I like about WordPress.com is that you can connect your Jetpack to it and it will update your plugins and your themes. Um, WordPress is pretty good like that. It keeps things up to date now if for the minor versions, not the major versions, which at least, you know, when you've got your plugins and your themes updated, that's pretty much the main, main, you know. And it's not necessarily much that you guys run WordPress, but you've got to support people who do run the WordPresses. They may not be very smart, they may not be very clued up about it, but that's not their priority necessarily. Their priority is, I want my website, I want a blog. It's your priority as a sysadmin to make sure that they can get what they want and they can do what they want without having too much hassle or too much outage. So this is what the WP CLI is like, the install. And it seems relatively easy to go. The thing is, it does rely on set versions. And this is why it doesn't really work for me. Uh, because like I said, we've got customers who have very old stuff, very new stuff, uh, a bit of everything. But that's pretty much how easy it is to use. And that's really kind of handy when you just want a command line. No one wants to log into 20 WordPresses to upgrade them all. No one wants to have to do that. It's just time consuming. So um, it does work quite well. And this is kind of a bit of an example of uh, someone who's used a shell script and he does the whole upgrade of all his servers and makes sure all his customers are good. And um, he's really good at that. Oh, I made it real fast. That's the end. Um, so if there's any questions or um, other information, sorry, I've got short URLs. It's actually just, if you go to blog.remiohosting.com, you can search WordPress and find a bunch of stuff. Otherwise there. Are there any more questions, comments, patches? Right. On. Working? OK, we have some time for questions. Oop. Uh, one of the things that I quite often do if I do have to look after WordPress is I make the document roots read only. Um, I'm wondering how you might tackle that in your scripts and the update bit? Because I've got a lot of manual intervention in my upgrade process. You've got quite a lot of scripting stuff. So what um, your thoughts? The problem with that is that WordPress needs to be able to access the files because it has uploading of plugins, uploading of themes. And this is why a lot of the security measures that people take to secure WordPress just break it, because it just doesn't work. Um, Setting it as a, as a user, running it as a, as a uh, different user, separate, and having it in a CH root, FCGI, whatever you want to do, that's the best option, and then having it so it's literally locked into there. Um, I have had some customers who have a little shell script that only sets certain files. The WP content is, is the directory that you need, needs to write to, so anything else is fine to lock down as those files. But those are also the, the one that they are able to write to is usually the one that gets exploited anyway, so it's it's... It's much of a muchness. You're better off for preventative measures. Um, Apache has modules, which are really good for uh, keeping an eye on what's happening. Um, 
so you know the mod security and stuff. Uh, file to ban is really good for just people who are hammering on URLs because people who are going to hack usually will search for a bunch of URLs first, and you can just there's fail to ban stuff all over the show, which will have that for for helping out for that. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Over here. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Liz. Oh, one more question. <laughs> Um, we, um, I'm very familiar with your situation, you know, a welcome fellow soldier to the fight against the never-ending crypto miners and spam bots. Um, have you ever considered integrating fail to ban with firewalling so that you can just um, drop their packets at the Yeah, edge? well, that's what fail, fail to ban uh, does. It pretty much uses IP tables and it will just basically... Yeah, I meant on the, oh, like on a different machine or like on a oh, centralised, but I'm no, not sure how your we, network lays out. No, because because of the just BPSs, the customer has full access to okay. them. We don't firewall externally from, from anything unless someone's literally being dosed. Okay. It's theirs to do what they want to and because they are the admin of it. But again, some people are really clued up. They know what they're doing. They've got it all set up with firewalls. Other people might be a web developer. He doesn't want to know how to run it. He just wants lots of websites for cheap. So he has Plesk sure. or whatever else. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Liz.